So I was recently contacted by a company that sells TV antennas and they asked me if I'd be willing to do a review of their antennas. Well, my first thought was, how do you really review an antenna unless you compare it to other TV antennas that are commonly used? So what I did is I gathered up 13 antennas here and I brought my signal meter with me and I, uh, I made a list of the signal strength readings I got on each of these antennas. Now the uh, signals we are able to pick up in this neck of the woods are all on UHF. So I won't be able to test these antennas on the VHF band, but I will give you some of my feedback on the different antennas that I've used and uh, the pros and cons. Now what I did here is I made a list of the uh, antennas that I'll be checking and I wrote the signal strength from each antenna going down this way and the frequency that I was picking up. Now if you'll notice these are all UHF frequencies going down this column here. And the reason I wanted to make sure I put the frequencies, a lot of people get confused nowadays. They think the channel number tells you what frequency you're picking up and it doesn't work that way anymore. In the old days it used to when we had the old channel selectors on our TVs and each one of these numbers rep represented a particular frequency. Well, that's no longer the case. We have what you call virtual numbers nowadays, and so these numbers here don't necessarily apply to these frequencies anymore. So basically the way it worked in the old days, you had your channel 2 through 13, and those were considered your VHF frequencies. You had your VHF low and VHF high. And then your UHF frequencies were channel 14 through, I believe, 83. I think that was all the way up to 887 megahertz. Channel 2 was, would be as low as 57 megahertz. Anyway, don't mean to confuse you on that part, so don't worry about it if you don't grasp that. But basically, we're going to go down the list here and talk about each one of these antennas and some of the good and bad points of them. So the, the antenna that the uh, company sent me are, are these ones here, the, the omnidirectional antenna, this indoor and outdoor antenna. This is called an ANTOP antenna, by the way, A-N-T-O-P. Um, this has a mount on it so you can use it for either indoors or outdoor use. This is omnidirectional, so it's designed for um, both indoor or outdoor use, I guess. Well, it didn't actually say, well, it says outdoor antenna, okay. So it is what you want it to be. You know, you can't really say that any of these antennas are, are for indoor and outdoor. If you're, if you're willing to tolerate an antenna like this indoors, then it's an indoor antenna, right? As far as the uh, claims that these antennas are HD ready and digital ready and all that, that, that's kind of a marketing thing that a lot of companies use. There's no such thing as a digital antenna or uh, an HD antenna. Antennas are antennas. It all boils down to what frequency are you trying to pick up and which antenna is designed for a particular frequency. So, for example, if I was going to try to pick up VHF signals, I'd want to get an antenna designed for VHF signals. and They tend to have the longer elements like this here. This is the Channel Masters Advantage 45. This is the WineGuard um, HD7694P. Both of them are designed for UHF and VHF. I find the Channel Masters does better on Channel 5, and the uh, representatives at WineGuard would tell you, well, this antenna here isn't really designed for Channel 5. So every antenna's got its own specifications, and sometimes the manufacturers can help you. Uh, this is a UHF VHF antenna made by GE. I think they call it the GE Pro. They refer to it as an attic mount. I think that's funny marketing again because there's no such thing as an attic mount antenna. It's, it is, it's going to be whatever you use it for. Um, this is the uh, Antennas Direct Clearstream antenna. Got a VHF element on it as well. Not going to be very high gain with small VHF elements like that. This is an RCA antenna that I wasn't terribly impressed with. I'll show you on my signal readings. You can uh, compare that one. This is a WineGuard antenna. Decent antenna on UHF, although not the highest gain. I do a little better on this RCA antenna right here. It's got both UHF and VHF elements. Again, anytime you see small elements for VHF, don't expect high gain. This is another Clearstream antenna for, from Antennas Direct. This is a Bowtie antenna. And then, of course, we're back to the, our Antop antenna. So I'm going to tell you some of the downsides I found with the Antop antenna and some of the upsides. Now looking at the meter here, by the way, or rather the signal readings, you can see they did pretty decent. In fact, um, you know, the omnidirectional antenna, this is the one I might actually consider using in some locations. It's got a built-in amplifier. 
and it's got an LTE filter. In fact, all these antennas they have, these two and this, this one down here has a built-in LTE filter. That's supposed to help enhance reception if you're getting interference from cell phones and cell phone towers. Now, I've never found them necessary around here. I've tried them on numerous occasions. I've never found an LTE filter necessary. But what I like about omnidirectional antennas, they're designed to be able to pick up signals in all directions. Now, in these parts, we have a signal layout where the signals are kind of spread in a way that I'll give you a little diagram here, a little list I made. So usually when I'm, when I'm putting up an antenna, I'm going to want to point my antenna in between the way our frequencies are laid out here. And I try to get the best of all the, the channels. In fact, if one's particular, particularly weak, I may point in a particular direction trying to get the signal to come in. But see, the, uh, the downside of the uh, end top antennas, what I found, is that the... Uh, switch on this amplifier didn't make any difference as far as signal strength. Now I'm using a digital to analog converter to measure my signal strength here and it tells me what frequency I'm picking up and what the signals are. That's how I came up with all these frequencies over here. But when I flipped the switch I didn't see any change in, in, the, uh, in the signal strength. Now what's weird is when I unplugged the amplifier then I did see this, most of the signals drop out to almost nothing. In fact, that's, that's one of the downsides of an amplified antenna, is if you have an, a situation where the amplifier goes bad, you're likely to get worse reception than if you didn't have an amplifier at all. On the upside, sometimes you absolutely have to have an amplifier on your antenna because the signals are too weak, or you're running so much wire to your antenna that you lose so much in the process that you really do need to have an amplifier. And so, uh, if possible though, I always try to go without an amplifier. In fact, um, if I was to do an antenna for somebody in this neighborhood here, of all the antennas you see here, the one I'd pick would probably surprise you. It would be this, this antenna right here, this loop of wire. Now, I can't do this in all neighborhoods. This is something I discovered just experimenting. This little loop right here does fantastic in the right neighborhood. In fact, if you look at my signal readings on my chart here, if you look down this column here, following down from the loop, these are the signal readings I got on different frequencies here. You can see they're pretty doggone good. So my theory is you sell the customer the least expensive antenna that they need, something that's going to be rugged and coarse, and something that'll last a while. And if they need a Yagi, you sell them a Yagi, but if they can get away with a loop, that's all they need. In fact, I had one of those just yesterday. The lady was all set to have me install a roof antenna, and I put one of these behind her TV set. She happened to live in a great location up on a hill overlooking all the mountains and that's all she needed. Oh, she was a little weak on channel 8, but uh, anyway, it worked out all right. So I know a lot of guys that are watching my channel, they're hoping I would say, well, you know, buy this particular antenna. It's going to be good in all locations. That's just not the way it works sometimes. I've had situations where I brought the highest gain antenna possible with me, expecting it to be the best antenna for the job, and I'd find out maybe something just a tad bit smaller worked. But I do try to gear toward VHF versus UHF antennas, and that's important that you get that all figured out. Um, if you go to those antenna sites where you can calculate what frequencies are broadcast in your neck of the woods, you're going to notice that they list the antenna frequencies as, by number. For example, They'll call it channel 5 or channel 12 or channel 8. What they're talking about is the old system where we actually would assign a permanent number to a particular frequency, like channel 2 was 57 megahertz, channel 12 was 207 megahertz. That's no longer the case. Now you're going to have what you call a virtual number. So if I'm picking up channel, it might say channel 5 on my TV monitor, but it might be broadcast at um, 575 megahertz maybe 79 megahertz, maybe 177 megahertz. So if they say, for example, channel 12, they're referring to 207 megahertz in this case. That's what uh, channel 12 would be according to old school, 207 megahertz. Anyway, I hope that doesn't get too confusing for you there. Now, I will say this, I was a little bit impressed with this indoor antenna here. I mean, it did all right. I. Uh, I had to have the amplifier plugged in to get it to work, so I had to bring my own power supply here and battery to have AC power available for these antennas. But uh, as you can see, it didn't do too bad for an indoor antenna. 
I don't recommend indoor antennas, however, unless you live in the right location. It's all about what you can get away with, right? Anyway, a lot of these marketing schemes these manufacturers put on antennas are kind of funny. Uh, when they call them HD antennas or digital antennas. No such thing as an HD antenna or a digital antenna. An antenna is an antenna. It's all about getting the right length antenna or the right design for the frequency you're trying to pick up. Anyway, as always, I hope you find this video informative and helpful. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe.